Don't wreck your hair. These are 10 things I think you should not do to your hair. Now, before we get into it, I didn't want to forget to tell you that I'm a writer, so make sure that you sign up for helenavery.substack.com where I've got an article, it's free, you can read it right now, and it is all about best products for really dry and damaged hair. I'll link it up, go ahead and check it out. 10 unpopular opinions about hair, and this is not really me, I'm not really one for the salty take, but I'm gonna go into it today. Curly girl looks bad if you don't have a curlier hair texture. The products look heavy and the waves can look undefined and there's no volume at the top of the head. Some people just need to reset. Yes, I wrote that when I was thinking about this and I think that it is true. I have dabbled in the curly girl world, but being a wavy, I think if you have truly curly hair, it can look amazing and does look amazing and definitely looks better than having frizzy sort of curls. I think we can all agree on that, but there's a huge section of wavies out there where I feel like curly girl, the method, and if you don't know what that is, it's just readily available for you to look up. It's like specific shampoos. You have to use a specific sort of way of washing, conditioning, brushing, and adding products to your hair. It is just so involved. I feel like a modified curly girl for wavies, for wavy haired ladies is the way to go. A lot of people have a lot of beautiful success. If you have wavy hair and you're making it work for you, by all means, I'm sure it's looking great, better than the alternative. But I feel like for a lot of wavies, the content creators here on YouTube kind of moved away from making content strictly about it because I feel that they kind of maybe wanted the flexibility to have some different looks. I know I certainly did. And the other problem with the um, curly girl method is it shows a lot of your scalp. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. That's great if you have super dense, super curly hair, it will hide that. But if you have just sort of wavy hair and you don't have a ton of hair, I think that just a lot of scalp shows and kind of can emphasize, maybe not hair loss, but maybe just like less dense hair. That's my thought. So I feel like it's sort of waning in popularity and I feel like it doesn't always look great. Like I said, for the reasons here, it doesn't always have enough volume and the top, it kind of can look limp and it sometimes looks bad a few days later. So I feel like it's just overrated, I guess is how I would sum that up. My other unpopular opinion is that people use too much Olaplex shampoo and conditioner and treatments when they do use it. And then they complain that it's too heavy. Well, of course it is because you're probably just using A, too much in your hands. So just cut down on the amount you use and maybe just like massively cut down on the frequency. I think if you do that, you will actually find that if you have quite damaged hair, it is actually beneficial. Just keep it as on the lower side or use it actually as it says. It does have a description of how to use it on there and just follow the description because some of the, the shampoo and the conditioner are one thing, but the other treatments sometimes are just like a once a week type thing. And I think people use them too frequently. So definitely don't use it more than what they say. My next top take is that the middle part has been around for too long, way, way too long now. It has been, I think maybe a decade. It has been around a long time and I'm not saying it's been popular since then necessarily, but I feel like it's time to move back to the side parts that give you more volume and stuff like that. The middle part, while easy, you know, you just part it in the middle and don't worry about it kind of thing, has been around so long that I feel like it kind of, everybody thinks that they can wear it, but I think some people would actually suit a side part better. So that is my hot take on the middle part. I still wear it sometimes, but I feel like it's, it's time for something new. My next hot take kind of has to do with the middle part of it all. And it has to do with really flat, straightened hair. It looks bad on most people. <laughs> Just gonna put it out there. Most people look good with a little bit of volume in their hair. I'm not saying it has to be teased up. I'm not saying it has to be up, out, and huge, or the higher the hair, the closer to God. No, I just mean a little bit. I feel like the very, very flat ironed hair was sort of huge in the 90s. So if you didn't know that, you'll know that now. And it kind of never really left, but it is just not as softening and flattering as um, higher hair was. Even in the 70s, I just didn't feel like that extremely flat hair really was super, super flattering to everybody. It suits models, of course, but anything suits models. I think for us average Janes, a little bit of volume is actually overall a better look, more flattering, and will look good in pictures, you know, 10 years down the line. Have you ever noticed that people that have the best looking hair, when you ask them about the, what they do to their hair, they, ha they use so few things, you're like, what, how's that even possible? That's my next point. I think that the more things the, you put on your hair, the more things you do to your hair, and the more things you put on your hair, oftentimes the worse it looks. The more products you layer on, the more different things you're just constantly frantically trying, the worse your hair actually looks. Oftentimes it's the people with the simplest routines whose hair looks the best. So there are many reasons for this. I'm not gonna like rag on people for doing this because I certainly do it too. You know, I test products here, so I am guilty person number one. But I think that there really is something to be said for keeping it simple and sort of building from there just with the minimum amount necessary of product, of different things that you're doing. <laughs> um, I really do think that less is more when it comes to hair and it comes to hair care. I don't think you should wash your hair every day. 
And I know that that is a popular thing to do. And I don't think you should wash your hair once a week. I know that that is also another popular thing to do. I think you should wash your hair as much as you want to wash your hair, as much as feels right and you feel is a good balance for you. And we know that you can wash your hair every day. There's nothing wrong with doing that per se, although it's maybe not the best if you have a really dense color or something like that. And there are probably a lot of other reasons why you shouldn't wash every, wash every day, but for a lot of us, it's totally suitable to do that. I say this from having learned it from dermatologists here on YouTube, and you can wash your hair once a week too if that's what is best for you. Some people have really, really dry hair and they just don't need to wash any more frequently than that. But the bottom line is you don't have to, I think, go by whatever anybody says. I personally think it's great to wash your hair, especially as a hair loss sufferer, every couple days, every two to three days. If you wash your hair every week, I mean, there's different reasons why you should wash it more frequently. Talk to your dermatologist about it, but one of the things, just one of the elements is that you'll lose a lot of hair in that one time a week, and that can be very distressing for people. So I think sometimes if you keep more on top of it, and you're washing, maybe if you're using Rogaine, Minoxidil, or different kinds of products, hair fibers, you want to keep maybe more on top of keeping the old scalp fresh. Maybe once a week is not going to cut it for you. But again, you got to do what works for you. So I think that any hard and fast rule that other people try and put on you about how often you should wash your hair is just is just maybe wrong. Unless you're getting like a doctor or medical advice on it, you got to do what works for you. So my next unpopular opinion is that I think hair is going to go high. I think that that's where we're going. I'm not talking necessarily a Marie Antoinette two feet tall in the air with wires and stuff like that, but I think it's gonna go higher than we've seen in a long time. And I just feel the reason for that is because we've been flat for so long, almost since the 70s. We had the 70s, then we had the puffy 80s with the big poofy hair and all that. And then we went back to flat again. I think ultimately though, we're gonna swing back to higher hairstyles and maybe top knots, higher, just, just more structured, more built up, almost 60 like beehives, beehive type hairdos. I feel like that's where we're gonna go next. Okay, I'm gonna read this one from my list here on my phone. Um, the cure for hair loss is at odds with the billion dollar hair industry, so I suspect it won't really get funded. A lot of people say like, how is it that we're able to achieve all these amazing things? I mean, we've had a mRNA vaccine, right? Like that just sort of came out of the blue. It's how are we able to achieve these amazing things and we cannot figure out pattern hair loss for men and women. Maybe the pharmaceutical companies will fund that, but I don't think the answer is gonna come necessarily from the hair care industry because it's at odds with what they do. And I'm not a conspiracist or anything like that. I just feel like as long as they can keep marketing products for us to sort of prevent thinning or make our hair look better, it just isn't really a lot of incentive really to cure this. But I hope that we do see a cure for it because I know for it because I know it's just so um, distressing to everybody. But do I think that we'll see a cure for hair loss in the next ten years? I I don't I don't I really don't I, w I wish that we did, but I'm just not confident that that will happen. My other unpopular opinion here is that people want to be told exactly what to do, and it's not right. Okay, what do I mean by that? Someone asked me to send them the exact pictures of what I use. And this was just like an Instagram. They were like, hi, can you show me the exact pictures of exactly what you use? Well, first of all, I found that kind of strange and kind of rude. Like, <laughs> you don't know me at all, though. Hi, no, how are you? Just like, send me photos right now of all the things that you use. And it's like, oh, okay, I, I didn't end up doing that. I was like, yes, yeah, sir, I don't have time to do that. <laughs> straight up. I'm happy to answer questions if you have them, but that's a little bit, I don't know, people sometimes are not the most polite when it comes to how they frame things on Instagram. And I'm not normally prickly. I'm not, I'm not prickly about this necessarily. Nothing will take the place of doing the sweat equity and testing out different things. And you've got to kind of do it and figure it out on your own. And I know we all want the simple solution and we want to watch TikTok things and we want, oh, I want exact that, that exact thing. But everybody's individual and their chemistry of their hair, body, oil levels, sebum levels, dryness, hair texture, porosity are all so different that we're all each on our own journey here and it can take time and you do have to do the work of trying things out yourself. I can certainly help by giving you my honest opinions about things, but exactly what I do works for me and it may not work for you. This is tough news, but I do want to deliver it and that is that you just have to do the work yourself of figuring it out and it does take time. My last unpopular opinion is that hair routines don't really mean that much. I think we're all looking for this holy grail of the perfect hair routine. I know I am. Here's the crazy thing though. As soon as you think you have it figured out, it seems to like the rug seems to get ripped out from under you and things change and all of a sudden what was working for you doesn't work for you anymore. It is very hard to find a shampoo, conditioner combinations that's going to work for you for your entire life because so many things can change. So many things do change. So keep an open mind, stay flexible. Don't get too caught up on other people's routines and how you're going to like emulate them and get the exact perfect hair because unless you have their exact hair, which is highly unlikely, it's going to be a little different for you 
And you'll find with even them, sometimes a product even gets from reformulated and you just can't use it anymore because it's not working the way that it did. For instance, Olaplex got recently reformulated. I don't know if you know about the whole Olaplex scandal. They had an ingredient that was banned in the EU um, and it caused sort of a bit of an uproar about it. They are now reformulating. Fine, the scent of Olaplex is pretty overbearing anyway. Maybe they will like lessen it. I don't know that Olaplex reformulated is gonna be the same as old Olaplex. I have no idea. So there you go. You can just pick like your perfect routine, work so hard at doing it, and then things change anyway. So best to keep an open mind. Hope that you had fun with these and that they weren't too, too salty or rude. Definitely not trying to hit that note but wanted to just talk about some stuff that I kind of don't voice that often. So that was kind of fun for me. Thanks so much for joining me here. Be sure to give a like if you enjoyed this and consider subscribing. We'll see you on the next video.